Good evening, welcome to Close Up. Tonight on the show to answer, clarify, confirm or deny things you may have heard about him, his government and his plans and visions for this country. The last time you may get to hear directly from him before the elections three days from now, we have the former commander, leader of the Fiji First Party and Prime Minister, Rear Admiral, retired Jose Varangi Bainimarama. Thank you for joining me on Close Up. Naka, Let's uh, start. You took over the government in 2006 to remove corruption, remove racism, remove the coup culture, strengthen economic growth devel and development, and make Fiji a better place under the so-called real democratic system. How successful have you been after eight years? Um, Stanley, I can say we've been very successful after eight years. Here's how successful we have been. We have come up with a 2013 constitution that's uh, devoid of uh, discrimination. That's how successful we have been in the last eight years. That's not what uh, we're hearing in the campaign. The recent campaign has shown, actually, that the issues that you, you came in to, to, to take on in 2006, they're still here. It looks like you're actually back to square one. What, what is still here? Well, they are, you, you're saying some of the racial issues and the racial politics that was there in 2006 is still very much alive. Yes, uh, Stanley, you know, we, uh, we are vulnerable to, our society is very vulnerable to gullible stories. We are not very well educated. And that's what I keep telling everyone, in the, especially those in the rural areas. Even some of us who are educated are still gullible to this, very gullible. I keep telling the people in the rural areas because uh, some of them not, have not even read the constitution in any translation. In the Tokay, let alone in the English. Uh, some of them do not know uh, what's happening in government, the debt in government, how we uh, conduct government business. Most of them do not know that. So the politicians go out and tell them all the lies that they want to, uh, to get their votes. And as I've said over the last uh, couple of weeks, I've been going around uh, turning out the fires, uh, the fires of lies that have, uh, that, have come been, through. that have been told to the people in the rural areas, and they believe that. Well, the, the interesting thing about that is you've been here for eight years saying the, preaching the message that you've you said about the way to move the country forward. These politicians that you say, they just come up the last few months. They've started the campaign, they've moved their disc around. So people have switched to them, or may have switched to them, despite what they've heard you say over the last eight years. So what do you think? Well, you well, tell me. Well, it's, it's the lies that I'm trying to tell you. You know, I'm, I'm saying that we are not very well educated, and most of the people are not very well educated. And they're listening to these lies, and they believe them. Because the person that has walked in to tell them the story is uh, probably a Nandi or a Ratu or a former prime minister or former permanent secretary. And uh, when they walk in, they are believed because uh, of their standing in, in government. And so they would rather believe them instead of they, you? They'll believe that. That's, that happens all over, all over Fiji. Uh, they come in and they sit down and they tell one certain former prime minister tells a uh, uh, settlement here in, in Suba. Um, if Fiji first wins, after the election, you won't be able to pray to Jesus. And they look around and no one has ever read the constitution, so they don't know. So they believe it. And that story has gone out. So uh, it's, a, it's a politics of fear. Anybody's so, working? And it's working. It's working. It, 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 politics of fear. Because they don't know the real truth. So I, I go out and tell them, if you can pray to Jesus now, you still can pray to Jesus after the election. So there's, there's no difference. So uh, we'll come to the things about the secular state and all later on. Let me start on an issue that you said you were going to work on was the corruption. Now, the argument that has been coming through the campaign, the country was not as corrupt as you said it was when you took over, that very few people have been actually prosecuted. And is anything, it's your government is corrupt by not, re re not releasing the Auditor General's report. So only that? Well, amongst other things. We'll like what? To that. Well, let's start with the Auditor General's <laughs> report, for instance, for the first one. So uh, no one has been taken to court? Very few. Very few. Like who? Oh, I can take one. Garcia. But you said the country was rife with corruption. That you had to do a okay. What exactly have you cleaned Okay, up? let's start with Garcia. And who else? There's another former Prime Minister. Please, tell me. All right, Mahendra Chaudhry. Mahendra Chaudhry. Okay. 
Okay. He, and he was in your government. May I add that? No, no, no. You? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, uh, when did he do what he did? Was he in my government? Well, he was investigated, I think, during your no, government. No, no, no. No, no, you didn't answer my question. When he did what he did, when was that? Was he in my government? Uh, no, before that. Okay. But, but did right. you investigate okay. him when he was in your government? No, no. The, yeah, and he's still, he was investigated now. And guess what has happened? All right, let's come to the issue of corruption. Okay. This Auditor General's report. Okay, is just that? Let, let's, just do, go, do let's, you, let's, let's just say just that. Do, do you know what uh, Ngarase did? Tell me what Ngarase did. You mean you don't know? You are a reporter. Tell me what he did. Uh, he, I know he's done plenty of things. I also know, know plenty of things he no, has why done. He was the, sent same, to, the same with Why you. he was sent to jail? Uh, yes. We do not know what he, he what he went in for, but I, I say, I'd like you to answer the no, question. Like no, you tell me, Stan, Stanley. The people are listening. You tell me why Garase went to jail. Okay, my question is, was there widespread corruption? Well, if the Prime Minister went to jail, obviously... On two counts? On two counts. Just a couple of weeks back, two of our senior, uh, former senior L, uh, NLTB members a director and the general manager went to jail. Do you know why? No, I do not know why. The people Please don't know? The people do not know. That was corruption. So, who's this telling you that there's no corruption? No, no one has been this sent to jail for few. corruption. It's not, as, it's not as much as it was. But do, as, you, know, as you, do was. you know the figures that FICAC has come up with? Uh, what is the figures that has come so up with? So you don't know? So you don't know. Well, I, I, what I'm saying. No, no. Is what what I'm saying, Stanley, mm. is you listening to these stories. You, uh, a reporter, you should be. Well, you should you should have uh, dial, you know, straight this and make sure that it's, uh, it's not just me that's listening to his story. It's yeah, I know it's TV one. I know it's, I know it's TV one. You say the uneducated <laughs> people of this country. They are the ones that listening here. <laughs> this is not for me. This okay. is for them. This is okay. for them. Right. Okay. 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 Uh, the Auditor General report. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, let so, me just say so something what, about that. What's the big deal about they, that? They're saying that you are hiding something. What are you hiding? Why are you not releasing this? Before they, you don't want people to see something before the elections? Or that's that's uh, Rote Mumu's uh, statement. Say it. Say it. Say Possibly, it's <laughs> I think it's from Biman's Prasad okay. statement. Okay. Uh, Biman? Yes. Biman Prasad? I could read uh, Felix Anthony's statement. Felix Anthony? Felix Anthony, this, this is the same Felix Anthony that was in FNPF that took out uh, something like $180,000 a year in... in, in uh, when you were in charge. And I removed him because of that. When I found out, I removed him. Yes? Okay. Okay. Come back to the Auditor General's report before okay. we go to the break. And Let's Biman, get this. Yeah. Mm. Biman Prasad. Who's Biman Prasad? Well, he's an academic, an economist. Ac we will Acad come to that. Academic. Mm. That's a big word for you, yeah. Stanley. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, Auditor General's report. And this is the, the yeah. statement that's put out by Rote Mumu. Yes. And she says, um, we have to tell this government to show us the Auditor General's report because his Auditor General's report will show the big debt that we have. Yeah? Yeah. That's, that's, that, that you're hiding that, something. Yeah. Uh, the big debt that we're hiding. Uh, the Auditor General's report don't tell you what the debt of the nation is. I tell you that. I give you that every time I read the, the budget every year. I'll tell the, the nation what the, budget, what the debt is. Not the Auditor General's report. So what's in the Auditor General's report? The Auditor General's report is the is the report by the Auditor General about uh, the utilization of the public funds in a year by government departments. And whether so it's been if, done properly or not. Exactly. So if I if I give uh, uh, the Minister of Health twenty million dollars to build a hospital, um, get all of this equipment, buy all this equipment, the Auditor General comes around and said the Minister of Finance had given you $20 million to buy, build a hospital and buy this equipment. Where is it? Where's the hospital and where's the equipment? And, and the uh, Ministry of Health uh, officials will come back and say, this is, this is a hospital we built and this is the, the equipment we bought. So why not? So, why? hold on. Yeah. So the Auditor General takes it down and says, okay, uh, this... Uh, this machine, I don't think it's worth that money we, he gave you. Uh, where's the rest of the money? Uh, no, oh. no. Uh, no, it's here. Okay, but we think we need to find out more. 
and this hospital you built, uh, there's a couple of windows missing. That's an door. excellent explanation. No, hold on. Excellent explanation. The question is, why not release it now? Hold on. No, no, you're asking what the Auditor General report. So you know. Yeah, now you've now explained you know. it. Now you've explained okay. it. Okay, no, right. but, but, but these people, the, the public don't I know. I think they've got uh, a good message. No, right no, 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 no. They haven't. Hold on. <laughs> okay, hold on. Hold on. on. Stand on. All right. Hold on. Let me, let me tell the public. Tell us the break. Everyone will have to hold on while you give this. Let, let me tell the public so that they know exactly what the Auditor General does. The Auditor General does that and he f figures out what's missing and it, it goes into his report. That's the Auditor General's report. It doesn't tell you what the debt is. It doesn't tell you what's happening. So what's a big deal? All right, the, the big deal they're saying is, you, why are you not releasing it now? Last question for, and waiting for Parliament. So if I release it now, what difference would it make? All right, we will leave that question for the public to Fiji. What difference will it make? This interview continues after the break. <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching Close Up with uh, Prime Minister Vorang Commodore Vor uh, Rear Admiral Retired Vorangambain Marama. I actually wanted to move on to other issues, but you have want to say a bit more about the Auditor General's report. Yes, because uh, I want to go back to um, what when you, when you mentioned about corruption. Uh, all these political parties have said uh, there's more corruption now than ever, and there's nothing that has been put in place to fix this up and uh, no one has been taken to jail on the contrary we know that a lot of people have been taken to jail for corruption but there's a there's a slight difference between well not slight difference but a big difference between the proper previous constitution and this constitution i'll keep holding this constitution up so you can remember this Tony. sometimes read it <laughs> okay carry on <laughs> no i'll tell you i'll tell you what so uh we've decided that uh, the auditor general doesn't uh, talk about the debt Okay, and that's what yeah, Rote we, Momo we, said. We've come to that. Okay, and that's what, what Rote Momo said. But I'll talk to you about corruption. You see, this Auditor General's report in previous years, in previous constitution, the Auditor General's report, uh, he makes the report, it's taken to parliament, and everybody debates about it. Everybody goes in the paper, everybody jumps everybody jump up and down about the report. Uh, this guy, is, this ministry has abused this, this government department. Well, it's an important part of governance. Yeah. And that report is filed away. That's it. This constitution, because of the need to re get rid of corruption in our midst, has come up with FICA and has come up with a transparency commission. It's in here. So that report doesn't get filed away. Somebody answers to the people of Fiji on the abuse of funds. That what, that's going to happen with this constitution. So you're saying it's more effective? More effective. For, corrup for corruption. We get rid of corruption. Hold on, let me continue. Yeah. You know, Mahendra Chaudhary, who's been uh, attacking me lately, he used up uh, private funds, uh, public funds. Public funds uh, to the tune of about $300,000 to fix his home. Yes, you, that, that you, was... Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Wait. Hmm. To fix his home when he was prime minister. Yes. And he says, I will not go to any government quarters. I will go and f fix my home. I'll take this m amount of money, about $300,000, and went and fixed his home, painted, got a new extension in, a TV room, a, a gym. Yeah, let's... Hold on. And then uh, that was picked up by the Auditor General. The Auditor General said that was wrong. Okay. Nothing but happened. Nothing happened. Okay. It was also filed away. Yet despite that, you brought him into government to no, join no, no. you after no, 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 no. We're talking about corruption, getting right. rid of corruption, and getting and talking about uh, uh, the Auditor General's right. report. So okay. We're talking about the Auditor General's report here, Stan. Okay. Your point is it's more effective in the Constitution as it is now? You don't know yet. People have, will be prosecuted. I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't completed my, okay. my statement. When I said that before, uh, he made... Uh, he, uh, he abused public funds by using $300,000 of public funds to fix his home, and the Auditor General has picked it up. Everybody, everyone complained about it, and it was filed away. But now, FICAC and Transparency Commission here. 
if Chaudhary ever becomes Prime Minister, God forbid, and does that again, his left leg will be hanging from a live wire. Well, the same thing. If you become Prime Minister and the Auditor General found that, will you also be taken into account on because of that? People don't know. It starts from the President down. Everyone is in that. Okay. Okay, Stanley. All right. Now we'll move on. Now, let's talk about uniting the country. Because the recent campaign, we've mentioned it a bit, but the recent campaign, uh, campaign shows uh, that the country remains as divided as it was when you took over in 2006. And actually, you're being blamed for it. You're being blamed for it and perpetuating this division because you've alienated, according to Sodelp and others, the indigenous people of this country, one, imposing the common name, removing the GCC, not providing added uh, protection, and you have underestimated the feelings of the ETOK on these issues. No, no, no. I Instead of uniting the country, in fact, you've divided it. No, no, no. They've done the, div they've done the dividing. They've done the division in our, in our community, not me. What I wanted us to do was to move forward. They wanted to take us backwards. That's the division. What I wanted to do was to uh, get rid of the discrimination in our society and move together as one. What they want to do is divide us, racially and in all other forms. So that's, that's the division, not me. I'm, I'm not the one that's doing the division. They are. They are the ones that are going out to sell all the tokay your land is not safe. When it is safe. Okay? All right. So, 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 you're so the, you stand by it. You're, you're, you're uniting the country. And are, are you succeeding in uniting this country? Because let me just give an example. It was, uh, but Jairam Reddy and Rambuka, they tried in 1999 to unite this country and bring them together. And they got annihilated at the polls. What do you th why do you think you will be different? Well, you tell me. Why do you think you will be different? <laughs> I, uh, I, we, they didn't, uh, I don't think they did enough uh, homework to go out and tell the people what exactly needs to be done. But was their, their uh, constitution good enough for us? It was already causing division, you're saying? Yes. Don't you like being called a Fijian, Stanley? Uh, eh? let, let's not worry about what I no, think. No, no, no. But, no. but I'm talking about uh, all other races before you... Everyone was called a half caste. I would like to be called a Fijian, but there are some people there who are saying, no, uh, that, that name belongs to me. Belongs That's, to who? That belongs to the indigenous people of this country. Stanley, don't you take that name because it does not belong to you. It belongs to me. No, they call it okay. I'm a okay. I love that. I'm also a Fijian. I got a Fijian passport. I go overseas, somebody calls me. Where are you from? I'm from Fiji. I'm a Fijian. I don't tell them I'm from Fiji. I'm a okay. I'm a Fijian. I'm Fijian. All right. And, and you know one of the best golfers in the world? Vijay Singh. Vijay Singh. What is he called when he goes? Mm. They've called him the Fijian. We'll move on because that issue has been covered quite well through this campaign. Now, but yeah. you've, you've delivered quite a few projects and uh, people have praised you for it. Now, many of the villagers that welcomed you and praised you when you delivered their roads and electricity over the last eight years, some say the feeling a lot of people are saying is that they're changing after hearing Sodelpa and they're seeing their discs about protecting indigenous rights. Exactly. And what, that's what, what, are, I, what are you... What and, that's, you and that's what I tell people when I go, uh, Stanley. You know, I, I, I went to, um, to Nabosa, I went to Kandabu, and they tell me, you know, the people that have already voted and voted for Sodelpa because of the lies they, they hear from Sodelpa uh, without hearing it from me, their votes have gone to the dustbin. Useless. Because their, their vote was because of lies. They voted for Sodalpa because of lies. So it's a useless vote. Oh, they every, they vote, every vote counts. They voting for people they think is why, representing why, them well. Why should you vote for somebody because he's lying to you? You vote for someone who's, who's talking to you about competing for uh, uh, how many roads he's going to build in Fiji. What is it going to do for your children? What is it going to do for education? Well, let's talk about those lies because the opposition is actually telling people that you are the one that has told lies. Oh, yeah? They, they're saying that, uh, that you stated you would not stand in the election. You stated that elections was going to be held in 2009, that you would not remove the 1997 constitution, you would not take a salary more than the commander's salary. And they say all of these things, Panamarama did the opposite. So, so you think they, they're true? 
All, the, all of these things you're reading to me. Well, the 1997 constitution was removed. We did not have elections in 2009. And uh, your salary is more than who your commander's salary. Who said that uh, we were supposed to have elections in 2009? Well, you have been on record stating uh, that there was supposed to be elections have in you 2009. Read, have you read the rest of that statement, Stanley, where I made that statement? Have well, you read it? I may of have. Of course. You see? Remind me. You see? Uh, I don't know if you've read it, but maybe you don't know what's the rest of that, what that statement says. And, and the politicians who are telling the people of Fiji this, they're saying, he said this. I said it in Tonga. I said it at the insistence of the Tongan Prime Minister, who's a good friend of mine, and a good friend of Fiji, and the Grand Chief, who's a good friend of mine, and a good friend of Fiji. It was a Pacific Island Forum, and there was a, a lot of pressure from the international community, including Australia and New Zealand, and the Pacific Island Forum. And they said, you must have election in 2009. Just make that statement. Make that statement so the pressure is off you, off Fiji, off the Pacific. As if, as if 2000, going to election is a big deal without pre pre preparing the people of Fiji for election. Read that statement, Stanley. I said, we will go to election in 2009 if and when Fiji is ready. When we are ready. OK? OK. So who's lying here? Well, you said it. <laughs> you, you, you. No, no, because they haven't used the rest of my statement, and all of a sudden it's 2009, etched in stone. Stone. They think just going to election will solve everything. All right. What about your your standing in the election? Let, let, let me let me finish this story, Stanley. They th people think just going to election is going to solve everything. You can't go to election without preparing Fiji. 2009, I went to Brussels. 2008, I went to Brussels. I keep telling this story. I know the European ambassador is, uh, um, doesn't know about it. Of course he doesn't know about it. He was not there. Uh, but I went to Brussels. And uh, I sat across the commissioner of the European Union, and he offered me 500 million euro. OK? You know how much 500 million euro is? It's quite a lot. Three times the yeah. It's about. Uh, 1.5 billion Fijian. He said, here, please, have election. And I said, you know, 500 million euros is a lot of money for Fiji. We've never seen this amount of money before. But you confuse me with the military leader of an African state, where he does it for himself. I do it for the nation. I did what I did in 2006 for the nation. Me and the military, I and the military did that for the nation. Thank you, but no thank you. When we're ready, we'll have election. So you think we're ready now? We are ready now. The campaign Stand seems it? to think that it's not ready. Now I'll come to something you just said recently. We are now ready. We will get to that, uh, get to that after the break. It's we are with the Prime Minister, Rear Admiral Retired Vorangian Bain Marama. We'll be back after the break. Well, welcome back to Close Up. We're with uh, Rear Admiral uh, Vorangian Marama. We're continuing on the, um, on the issue of lies. Now, on this show, I had Mahendra Chowdhury, Rote Mumukepa, and Felix Anthony all telling me that you have lied about you and the AG have lied about your salary. It's an issue you can't seem to shake away, but uh, Rote Mumu actually told me that she has seen some documents showing that you ha you're actually getting more than what you declared. And Biman Prasad says, uh, you and the AG's salaries strangely are not on the civil list, yet the civil list says, gives the list of all the other salaries of the other civil servants and ministers. I've got a civil list right in front of me here. My name is there. I don't know what civil list is looking at. But let me, let me go back to He's this. He's got it wrong. He's got it wrong. Let me go back to this. This is the same <laughs> Biman Prasad who tells the people of Fiji that there's 1% growth when the World Bank says we have 3.6. Same guy. Huh? The Reserve Bank also says that, yes. Yeah. yeah. So this is the same guy, same Biman Prasad, who, who sees himself as an uh, economist and academic. He and, doesn't see himself. He's got the title. No, no. <laughs> and he, he wants to become prime minister. I don't know where, he, where he's been in the last 10 years. 
Rotembo Mukep, where did they say she's seen this, this supposedly? Uh, she told me on this show. She's seen it. Why she didn't she bring it seen. and show it to the people of Fiji that I've seen uh, that he's got more money than uh, he's been paid? And Mahendra Chaudhary, he's come on the show to say, I've, I've seen that bit that I've been paid $1 million. And you believe this, people believe this guy. And this guy is the biggest crook in town. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> when when he's so when they're he's, lying about your salary. Of course they are. Okay. Uh, isn't it funny? The biggest crook in town, a lady who hasn't shown you any proof that I'm being paid one million dollars, and this supposedly academic who can figure out what who got it wrong on who that got thing it wrong on the wrong. So, so it is in the civil list. The civil list is yeah. You All can right. you can open that list if you want to. But, but I, I, I won't let you stand me. <laughs> but, but let me tell you this. It's, it's on record there. We'll check the civil list. You can check it. Mm. But uh, so Chaudhry tells you uh, that I'm being paid one million dollars. Who get paid one million? Who has the guts? Which prime minister has the guts to pay himself a million dollars in Fiji? Why are be people believing this story? And this is supposedly coming from the biggest crook in town. You know, I keep saying, Chaudhry, Previous years, when he goes on campaign trail for Labour Party, he sits there, hundreds of people sit in front of him. Now he sits there. Uh, sorry, there's uh, no one here to make your cup well, of tea. No, what I'm saying is, the indo fijians have believed that he's the biggest crook in town. What I find funny is that mm. you once called him Robin Hood. You called well, him some kind of Robin Hood well, in the government. That was, that was before. Now he's calling me... Uh, a liar because I'm being paid one million dollars. I'm throwing back. So Robin Hood is now the biggest into, crook. He's gone. Robin Hood is now a crook. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's not let's giving. He's not giving it back to the public. <laughs> let's 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 touch on the on the land issue, uh, because it's it's something that is uh, from the media. We think uh, you you it put you on the ropes a bit in the campaign. Who me? I, I think so. Yes. Yeah. So you you because you you. you the, they actually put a full page ad in the in the newspaper saying this is the truth. So they were bold enough quoting sections of your of the 2013 constitution. And one one provision they said it's not adequate enough because it just needs 75 percent of parliament yeah. and a referendum, and it could be changed. So for them that's not in, uh, that's not a protection that's adequate enough. It's inadequate. What's your response? You see, this is the biggest lie that uh, Sodelpa is coming up with, and unfortunately for us. Unfortunately for the people of Fiji, the other parties have jumped on the bandwagon. And they've, they think Sodelpa, uh, this is all about other parties and, and the government and Fiji first. They don't like the idea of the remo removal of discrimination. They don't like that. Because uh, that help, has helped them in the past. They've gained positions. Uh, you know, I call them opportunists, a bunch of losers to use this to get back into parliament. Uh, and they've, they've used this throughout the campaign trail to say that land, the Tokay land is not safe. These are the same group of people we know. It has been highlighted in the press. Everyone knows about it. This is the same group of people that gave away that land in Danarao. Gone. Forever. It's not going to come back. OK? This is the same group Native of people. land to freehold land. Same group of people that gave away that land in Mommy. Gone forever. Native land to freehold. Okay? Same group of people. They're going around now to tell us that land is not safe in this constitution. We, we, when we found that out in 2012, that those two lands have gone and not going to come back again, we put a decree out to say that that's not going to be done again, ever. And that's translated into what's in the constitution. <coughs> so Itauki land is safe in the constitution. It's safe in the constitution. Uh, no one's going to take the ownership away. No. If you want to change it, let me start it. If you want to change it, 75%, they said it's easy to change it, 75%. Okay? That's mm -hmm. what they're saying. Yes. And that's, they know it's safe. And the provisions of the GCC and the Senate uh, and all that is up they, there. They say it's safe. They know it's safe. 
in the Constitution. They know that land is safe. Now they're coming up with another way, saying that, but we can change the Constitution. And, and that's a story that's going around now, the story I'm hearing from uh, uh, the public at large, especially in the rural areas. If there was an Indo-Fijian Prime Minister or a Chinese Prime Minister and is looking at this land that he likes and he wants to move it across to uh, transfer it uh, out of uh, the Tokyo hands, he can change the constitution. Not that easy. 75% of the parliamentarian. If my party is going to win 50 seats, there will be no opposition to that. Okay? Okay. Because we will not allow it forever. Now, um, but it doesn't matter which no, party. Yeah, exactly. But even then, and then it comes out to the voting public at large, a referendum, 75% of that. You think 75% of the Toke are going to vote and say, yes, we want that land, our land to be transferred to freehold? Of course not. Come on, let's not be stupid. We, we really have some people who think that we're all gullible. You know? So they're just playing, playing with the situation, yeah. playing with the words there. Let, let me come to the GCC, because it's yeah. also be another one that's been a thorn at your side. I mean, it's not just not been, really. It's not, well, it's not just not been really. Sodelpa. It's been NFP, yes. Labour, uh, the, the, all of them. <laughs> NFP. All, all, all of them. Uh, NFP. It, it's not just the Ito K candidates. Okay. No, they're saying that uh, you disrespected a noble Fijian institution, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, worse, you re remove it unilaterally, without consulting the views of the Ito K. And that uh, some even come and say it could have been reformed or restructured. It did not have to be removed altogether. Okay, you want my answer, Stanley? Yes, I want your answer. You see, a lot of people don't understand why I did what I did in 2006. And they said, you just stood up and removed that. In 2006, I just stood up and removed a government. Why do you think I did that? Was it so I can take that 500 million euro? when I was offered by the European Union. A lot of people don't understand that. That's what I'm saying. A lot of people don't understand why the military did what we did in 2006, to remove discrimination from our midst, so that we can move together as one. All races, disability, the blind, the young, the old. We can't, we, when we do uh, development, we need the whole Fiji to be developed. When we do education, we want the whole of Fiji to be educated, not just the elite. That's why we did what we did in 2006. We just stood up and removed it. We just stood up and removed the Great Council of Chiefs. But it's not the chiefs. They are confusing us that when we, when we said we're going to put aside the Great Council of Chiefs, you are taking the, great, uh, the chiefs aside. That's not true. We know that's not true. The so chiefs are sitting here. And as I said, they will be here and will, until kingdom well, comes. What they're saying, it was an institution that made them feel secure. What? As, yeah. as an uh, yes, as yes, exactly. The elite wants that institution because it makes them secure. Not okay? the people? Do you know what the, do you know what the, uh, the great council of chiefs is? It's the most undemocratic entity in Fiji. It runs parallel. People would say it's the military no, no. that's the most undemocratic. No, 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 no. That's, that's not true. It runs parallel to a democratic government. These are elected people by the people. And we have an unelected group of people here making decisions for us, including the Senate. The same group of people are in the Senate. So that Senate is making decision an unelected body that's making a decision for, for the people of Fiji. So it has to go? They have to go. They don't, they're not supposed to make any decision for us. But besides, besides that, besides that, uh, who in NFP is uh, backing this up? Biman Prasad? Yes. Okay. To Paul Dondalo, she will back it up because she wants to be sitting there and, and wait, and yep. Biman Prasad? <laughs> Biman Prasad is an indo fijian Does he know what the, what the Great Council of Chiefs does? It brings about racial discrimination. Maybe he doesn't care because if you see the assets he's got, uh, when we declare our assets, he's fairly quite well off. All right. We, we'll, but, yep. hang on. but who looks after that indo fijian poor farmer? 
when things break loose. Certainly not Biman Prasad. He doesn't care. That's why he thinks it's a good deal to back the Sodelpa. I probably will get more votes if I say we should bring back the great councillor chiefs. When it's not going to do us any good. It will not protect them? It will not protect these guys. All right. But as I said, he's fairly well off, eh? so he's okay. He can just stand up, catch a flight, we, and we, go we, to New Zealand and Australia. We'll have to leave that note. I've been told for the last three minutes we have to go to break. But we'll continue with on, on the discussion. Yes, please. I haven't finished with that. We'll be back after the break. We'll come and yeah. touch on the Goli Goli Bill. <laughs> Stay with us. Welcome back to Close Up. We're with uh, Rear Admiral uh, Warangi Bainamarama. Now, uh, I was going to go into the Golden Goli Bill, but uh, let's just touch up on the situation with the GCC. You're saying that it's not going to protect the people of Fiji or the indigenous people itself? No. Uh, Stanley, the GCC is for the elite. It's not there to protect the Itoke, all the Itoke, or the people of Fiji. When, if somebody says, oh, it protects the whole of Fiji, that's rubbish. Let's, let's face the truth, okay? It's an elite group to look after themselves. Previous years, 40, 50 years ago, it was most relevant for us. They looked after the whole of Fiji. Parliament has come in. Uh, now we have election. The government is there. So they should be sidelined, but no. No one had the guts to tell them, uh, thank you very much, but you can't make decisions for the people of Fiji now. It's time it, to move on. There's a, there's a time to move on. But it got worse. A lot of people don't seem to understand this. It got worse. It was, it was used by, by uh, Rambuka in 87. Okay? I keep telling the story that I was, in, uh, I was at uh, the trade winds when uh, SVT lost. Uh, and they said they would, would like to, to do a traditional apology, the Matani Nasau, to the Great Council of Chiefs for having lost the election. Why would the SVT go to the Great Council of Chiefs to seek an apology in the traditional uh, 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 fashion? Uh, so this was in 1999? 1999. And, and it's in the papers. Anybody can go back into the papers and read this. And I remember the former... Uh, Maramaroko to indicate in Dilala was very much against this. And she said there should not be any political party coming up to the Great Council of Chiefs. But they succeeded in, in, uh, in uh, trying to, in coming up. And so they, they did their Mataninga Sao, their traditional apology. And I, I, I was there and I watched this. And everyone that sat around the Great Council of Chiefs, all the members of the Great Council of Chiefs, maybe except for four or five, stood up from their chairs and came and sat. So it was a SVT, Great Council of Chiefs. And then it became? And it became an SDL, Great Council of Chiefs. You know what happened in the Great Council? They did not want to become Ambaini Marama's Great Council of Chiefs. No, no, no. no, no. Don't, don't be sarcastic when you don't know where you're, going, where you're taking us. Well. Okay? Uh, you know what happened in, when SDL took over, the Great Council of Chiefs? Uh, Requested government, please government, give uh, the Fijian holding $20 million because uh, the Tokays are there and it'll, uh, the provincial council, it'll also fund money for the provincial council. Uh, so the government, same group that was sitting in the Great Council of Chiefs, gave that $20 so million dollars to, hold on. You've cited um, enough examples, I no, think. No, no, I no, want no, to move no, on no, to No, 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 I want, I, want, I want the people of Fiji uh, to know this because this you, we're talking about the Great Council of Chiefs. Right. I want them to understand why this was done. So you're saying it's no use to even reform it, it has to go? It has to go. And the government, the same group that was sitting in the Great Council of Chiefs, because the SDL, Great Council of Chiefs, they gave this $20 million to uh, Fijian Holding. What is the future role for the chiefs? And, let me ask. And $20 million was turned into a grant. Okay? You ask anyone. That $20 million was turned into a grant. In other words, they don't have to pay it back. They don't have to pay any interest. So it went money straight into their pocket. 
you'll ask anyone, it was a two-tier uh, shareholding. The provincial council is at the bottom, least shareholding, and the elite at the top. So it is for the elite. You've made your point. Now we'll come to the Golden Golden Bill. Because uh, one of the reasons you removed the government as well, you st where you stood up and removed it unilaterally, you said it would divide and destroy the country. Rote Mumu said again on my show, and that's why I want to address it, that you've been, you were misled about the bill by a few tourism operators. They came and whispered it in your ear. They're saying that this will destroy the country. And she said that uh, this issue, the Golden Gold Bill, is really about giving the Ita okay what they had given to the British in 1874. The land came back to them, but not the Golden Gold. So according to her, the issue will not go away, and she wants to address it. Why is this bill dangerous that you don't want it back? She's standing. This is why I'm going around the country to tell the people of Fiji she's not a good leader. She doesn't know anything that's happening around her. Anybody who's been to Form 5 would know what the Golden Golden Bill would do to this, people, to this nation. It'll kill us. It'll kill our economy. She doesn't understand that. She doesn't understand the ramification of bringing about the Golden Golden Bill. What do you think? I, I removed the Golden Golden Bill just because a couple of tourist uh, owners came and told me to do that? It would kill our economy. No one, would, no banks would be here. All the tourist operators would leave. Not just the two tourist operators, the whole tourism industry will collapse around us. Our whole economy could, would collapse the around us. Collapse. Let's say this is about their, the, the rights of the ETA, okay? Forget the, the rights of the ETA, okay? I'm talking about the economy. Yeah. I'm talking about well, the economy. That's what the point <coughs> she's making. The point she's making is this is about our rights, the ETA, okay, to the Golden Do they own the Golden Golden now? Well, they, they Do, say they, oh, wait, wait, wait. Well, it's, it's not put in. No. It's not put in the. It's not generated law. So it's not. It's not ours now. Okay, that's that's what she's saying. She, yes, she's referring. It's still uh, to the crown. It still okay. belongs to the state. So we're not missing anything. But if we encroach into that area, Stanley, we'll kill this economy. Our kids. We're doing all this for our kids and our grandkids. You bring the Golden Golden Bill, this win, forget this. Forget the future of our kids. They'll never find anything in Fiji, nothing prosperous, because no one will stay in Fiji. You, you acted in 2006. You might what? be one of those guys. <laughs> you, acted, you acted in, <laughs> don't, 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 don't scare me. You acted in 2006, you acted mm. in 2006 to say to one of these things to remove. Rote Mumu and Sudapa says they'll bring it back. What will happen if they bring it back? What will you do if they bring it back? This is a question a lot of people are asking. You know, there's a, this TV, New Zealand TV, came and asked me yesterday uh, with a mic in my face. Uh, we hear there's going to be another coup. Yeah, you tapped it away. I saw yeah, that. But why are they coming up with these stories? Because they hear, they're hearing it. <laughs> I said that the, the military and the police will protect this nation. The 2000 events is not going to be repeated. There's a whole lot of threats and a whole lot of scary uh, people what about being scared. The 2006 events. What's wrong with the 2006? Well, event? if will the Golden Golden Bill come back? Will Mbani Marama stand again to act to save this country? Stanley, I am a politician now. I'm no longer the military commander. You're asking the wrong guy. You sure? That's not what people are saying. <laughs> They're saying you're still in charge. <laughs> come on, Stanley. <laughs> The guy in charge is on the hill. We call him His Excellency the President. <laughs> and, and it's interesting uh, because uh, the NFP, again, <coughs> your friend Biman, he's saying that the people of Fiji should not support coup makers. Mm. And then the, um, you're trying to remove the coup culture, but the only person that's standing in these elections that has, has done a coup, it's you. Well, if you, you know, people keep referring to coups in 2006. Well, if coups is uh, about uh, removal of a government, then I'll, I did the coup. But I did it for a reason. And I've told the people of Fiji and the international community that, uh, and that is to get rid of corruption and, of course, uh, uh, get us back on track. And I've done that. This is the legacy of the military. Stanley, this is what, why we did what we did in 2006. The military did this. And I, I don't want people to forget that. We have um, 
about one third of our our voters who are under 30. Yes. Uh, you certainly don't fit that bill. <laughs> just, just about. <laughs> just about, okay. Yeah. Uh, but most of them don't know what happened in 2000. The deaths of soldiers, the deaths of policemen. Two policemen and three soldiers died here in Fiji. First time ever. Killed by rebels because they want to bring about discrimination when we don't want that. Now, which government, which, what, which, the, uh, which side would people choose and which side would people, uh, government choose? Discrimination or not discrimination? You, Stanley, tell me. Which one would you go for? Discrimination or no discrimination? I think everyone will say no discrimination, but that's Great. not. Thank you. But that's we'll not what they're saying. We'll it's stop. not about discrimination. This it is, is about, about, about their, their rights and no, no. Not, not alienating anyone. No, no. To, to say that we, the Tokay have lost their rights is rubbish. I'm with Tokay. I haven't lost any rights. Seriously. I'm going around to all the villages with my, on, the, on the campaign trail and the, the customs, the traditions, nothing has changed. Nothing. People have said uh, uh, this uh, Sodelpa and NFP are going about saying, I've stolen the Toke rights. Mm. I've dismantled the Toke, um, the, the society. I'm not. Well, you've, you've taken, the, taken them back. I mean, they point to the scholarships, for instance. But, but let me go back to, to Biman. I keep going back to Biman and, and Tupou because they think they're a threat. But the things that they're coming up with are just rubbish, just like Sudapa. I mean, Tupou would love to give, bring back the great council of chiefs. Biman doesn't know anything about the events of 2000. And I've said, you open his, his assets, he's, he's quite well off. So he's not really worried about what the, uh, the average uh, Indo-Fijian uh, uh, is going to happen to the average Indo-Fijian when something hits a fan, okay? So, but this constitution you're saying, it'll remove the coup culture? I haven't finished this. Stanley, I'm okay. still talking about okay. Riman Prasad. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I keep hopping about NFP. What NFP fought for is now here. One man, one vote. Okay? All of a sudden, some group of people have start up again NFP. What, what are you standing up for? We're fighting for the rights of the indo fijian Excuse me? We uh, want to... This is the first thing I remember... This is the first thing that uh, Biman Prasad said in one of his earlier interviews. I want to bring about uh, true democracy. Excuse me? Well, the, the true democracy... I'm the guy. <laughs> people, they say they want true democracy because they think that you're making all the decisions here. They're saying, people, don't be fooled. That's got, that's when Marama may have taken that's, off that's, his uniform, he's the one that's nothing, making the decisions That's got here. nothing... My, my being here and making uh, those decisions got nothing to do with bringing about true democracy. It's, it's a work of, uh, it's, it's a, the understanding that I had with the military. 2006, Biman Prasad was not even around. He doesn't even know what happened he, in 2000. He would, he, say he, he, he would say, let me just pretend to be, he would say he, he was around. He was uh, in the university yeah, studying, his, making academic and making um, oh, yeah, sure. analysis of the economy and yeah, yeah. the impacts of the thing yeah, at sure. that time. So, you're saying that he wasn't around at the time was probably No, no, I mean, correct, what yeah. I said, but he wasn't around. He, he, there was no participation from him to bring about true democracy then. So all of a sudden, he's come out of the woodwork and said, oh, I want to bring about true democracy. He doesn't even know, understand what true democracy is. You do? This is true democracy, Stanley. <laughs> That's what I've been trying to tell you and the people of Fiji. That this is true democracy. The 2013 This is the legacy of the military. All right. Three soldiers died, two policemen died, and we don't want them to die in vain. We've decided from the outset, let's get together, let's find out exactly why these soldiers died. And the soldiers died because of discrimination. People flocked to parliament because of politicians. Politicians lied to them and said, we have to get rid of the indo fijian prime minister because he's going to take our land. Okay? That's what politicians, the losers, the opportunists, the people uh, who think I, if, if we get rid of this guy and his, and his uh, government, I'll be an ambassador, I may be a senator, I may be a minister. So they are politicians. 
They said then in 2000. On, they said then on, in 2000. Let me let me let me win this argument with you. Okay. They said that in 2000 that they would turn um, uh, Fiji into uh, that Mahendra Chaudhary would turn Fiji into a little colony of India. Now they're saying that Fiji will become a Muslim country, and also will be taken over by China. So all, see all these lies. But let let me finish this, uh, Stanley. They came and lie to the vulnerable Tauke. Okay? The vulnerable Tauke. The people who don't know, who have not read the Constitution. The people who do not know what's happening in government. And it's our responsibility as leaders to tell them what's happening. That's what we should be doing. But they don't know that. So these politicians, these losers, these uh, uh, opportunists come and tell them, let's get rid of these guys. So they come in hundreds. The vulnerable people, they don't know what's happening. They come because their land is going to be alienated. That's what come they down parliament, they burn sewer, they kill soldiers, they kill policemen. But they don't know why they're there. And you know, I keep telling the stories then, every day in 2000, when uh, parliament uh, was going on, when they were people were taken as hostages in parliament, my company commanders, my battalion commanders, are coming to tell me, we can storm the parliament today uh, in this fashion. We can do it here, we can do it there, we can do it from here, we can do it night time, we can do it morning. And I said, yes, we can do all that, but we won't. Because if 1,000 people are in parliament, 900 of them don't know what's happening. They're there because of lies. And that's exactly what's happening now, Stanley. People are voting because of the lies they've been told. And that's what I said yesterday, and that's why I keep telling everyone in Fiji, if you voted already in the pre-poll, if you voted for Sodelpa, you voted because you've been lied to. Your vote has gone to the rubbish bin. That was their choice huh? anyway. That wait, was their choice. That wait, was their choice. Wait, wait. You may not be happy, but that's their choice. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. If that's you, democracy. Yeah, but that's not... That's, Democracy in an evil form. Then if you if you refer to it as democracy, it's it's an evil form of democracy. I really wouldn't call it democracy. If you go to parliament because you lie to people. Well, we'll see in three days' time what the people think but, of that. But, we'll have to and, go to the break. I haven't yeah. finished. I haven't finished. We'll, we'll I haven't continue finished this. We will no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, Stanley. I haven't finished. I keep telling people if you vote for Zezo, if you've already voted for Sodapa because of these lies your vote has gone to the rubbish bin. In the next three days, you have the opportunity to think about the vote. Those of you who have not voted, that you're voting for democracy. After four years, then you'll vote again. You'll never have the opportunity to put a government in place who will take this yes, nation forward. But if they've heard all that and they choose still to, will you respect their decision? Standing. I've been, I've been asked. Will you respect the I've decision? been asked. Will you accept the the decision of the election? Of course, tell me. Ask the other parties. Will they accept the decision of the election when they lose? With the Rear Admiral Vorangel Marama. Don't go away. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Close Up. You have, uh, Prime Minister, you've introduced some revolutionary policies. Free education, the common name for everyone, least money now shared equally amongst the landowners, um, major investments in road infrastructure. What are some of the major products? Should you win this election, what can people look forward to now? What's thank you, you Stanley. I just want to correct your statement. I will win this election. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. We'll, okay. We, we will see. Okay, Stanley. We will see. But uh, no, uh, you said uh, revolutionary, but I think they are also regional. Yeah? Some, most of them are regional. Well, Bus fare? Mahendra Chaudhary said free education was not an original idea. It was his idea. Yeah, but did he do it? No? But, but can we go to the. To the we have to move forward. We have to move have, forward. He what, what should... didn't have the money. That's an important thing. What and he didn't have the political can they look will to? to do it. <laughs> What's the next plans after eight years? Or have okay. you done everything? No, no, we, what, we, what we, will, we, will we will continue with the, our policies. 
We'll build on it. Well, yeah. We'll, we'll continue with the policies. We'll continue with the education. We'll continue with the scholarship. <coughs> we'll continue with the development in the infrastructure because that brings about, that builds on our economy. We need, we need a strong economy because at the end of the day, that's what we want. We want money in our pockets. Okay? Right. Uh, we want uh, uh, people to buy things. So for that, they have to have money in their pocket. Agriculture, we need to grow. Our economy needs to grow. We have money in the bank. Uh, when we started, it was something like $400 million in the Reserve Bank. Now, uh, the latest figures is about 1.7. It was sitting at 1.8 billion. So it's gone. The economy, uh, world economy was, uh, was uh, the growth was, the, was, the, uh, was seen to be I mean, about 2.9. We've surpassed that. We're now 4.6. So you're saying people expect Better deliveries, better delivery. deliveries, more because things. But what, what, what these people are saying is all these things that you've said is you're actually increasing the debt to 49%. And all these things that uh, Fiji First have said that they've promised, people are saying, hey, everyone, it's a vote buying gimmick, and the future generations are going to pay for this. Bain Marama does not have the money to pay for these things that he is promising. Do you know that uh, FERCA? Uh, the July figures, they've surpassed their collection by $92 million. Do you know that? Do these people talking to you about this debt payment, do they know that? Will that be enough? Well, uh, you, you, you said 49%. The debt level. Have you seen the debt level of previous government? Well, um, that level of previous government was 53, 54. 52 50. was the highest, okay. not 53. Okay, so 49. It's no big deal, really. We can pay that. We there's no. It's within the range. It's within the range. We, can, we it's, the Chinese don't have to take our nation because we have not paid the Chinese debt. Chinese debt is very minimal to what we have there. So don't worry too much about what we can do and what we can do with the economy. We we worked at it. You know, uh, you know the uh, World Bank IMF were going to give us one billion dollar in 2009, and I turned it down. Why did I turn it down? One what? billion dollars is a lot of money, you know that, okay? Especially when in those times, Australia and New Zealand had lobbied uh, the Asian Development Bank not to give I us understand. any more development Why fund. did you turn it down? Wait, wait. Uh, Australia and New Zealand had lobbied Asian Development Bank and the World Bank not to give us any more development funds. And they have not. They have not. ADB has not given us any development funds since 2006. Hopefully, They'll give it to us when, after, after election. So do you, can you imagine how much money we will have in, in the kitty then to provide development to the people of this nation? We didn't have any. And yet we have highways, we have schools, we have hospitals. Taken on loans, though. Loan and working on our economy. Not, not so much loan. It, it's our economy. We build up that economy. Okay? We have $1.8 billion in the bank. Stanley, check the financial figures, check with the Reserve Bank. How many government has ever had $1.7 billion in the bank? Find out. So your government has it, achieved it'll that. It'll do you good. Yeah, you've, sta <laughs> you've stated that you've, you've been judged by your performance. The opposition states that actually uh, you have not delivered uh, uh, in some of these. They said uh, food prices have increased by 60%. Again, this is your friend Biman's um, figures. And over the last eight years, poverty levels has increased to around 50%. And that the loans you've taken you'll be, uh, to build the roads will be a huge burden on future generations. See, Stanley, I can, this guy is a liar. There's, there's an ad going in your, in your uh, in a station that talks about uh, what poverty at yep. 45. You yep. said 50, now it's 45. Which one does he want you to say, 45 or 50? Somewhere around there. Okay. When uh, the last uh, survey by the World Bank and IMF was uh, 30, 32%. That's a bit way back though. Yeah, but so where is he getting his figures from? Tell me. Well, some would say he's an economist. <laughs> 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 You're not the economist, he is the economist. <laughs> That's the biggest joke in town <laughs> about this guy. I think he'll put one and one together and give you a plate of sandwich and he'll believe it. <laughs> but seriously, that was 32, 32% then. Uh, uh, what? 32. Mm. But we have 
we have more money now in our economy. Anyone would think that it's gone down. 2009, 2014. From 2009, we had $400 million in the reserve. Just, just to give you an example. Now we had $1.7, $1.8 billion. So you think all that is not true? But where's your evidence? <laughs> where's his evidence? Okay. To say it's 50%. Wait, hey, yeah. listen to me. Mm -hmm. You haven't feel it. I haven't feel it. Where's your evidence to allow him to make that statement in your TV station? Well, no, both of you haven't got the evidence to, to show it. No, no, it's not me who's got Ed he, he, in, in, your he, red, he in the TV saying, station. He is saying, and you know, people, none of us can say, he is saying, oh, the Fiji First Manifesto will only bring things down by $443. You would have seen this. <laughs> My manifesto will bring the removing the uh, taking the vet down from uh, fifteen percent to ten percent will actually uh, bring things down by about a thousand dollars per year per family for, for anyone living under twenty thousand. For who? So he's saying his manifesto is better than his. His many, than better than yours. Does, does he does he know that uh, there's a such thing as a basic food item that we've put together? This government has, has identified basic food items and they're vet free. And if you remove the vet, 5% vet, it won't make any difference to that, those food items. It doesn't. I, I hear uh, this guy, Pramod Chan, the, the bus owner who's standing for NFP. He's going around Lambasa with two packets of milk. And he says, uh, this is the packet of milk before Benimarama came and it cost $2. And this is a packet of milk now is here that costs two dollars thirty. See, see what he's done? He's increased the price of milk. He doesn't know that the price of milk is dictated by Fonterra in New Zealand. We don't have any milk here. So is there a lot of misleading things going around that you're saying? Story let, of our let, life, yeah. let let me let me move on to nothing before we, we wrap up. But but uh, Stanley, I just want to remind you yeah. and T V one. Yeah that has come up with that ad, that ad is now showing in your, in your, in your station that uh, poverty is at 45%. Please make sure that this is shown in my close-up program and that that story is not true. Funny enough, he's also complained about your ads uh, on, in the papers. About like what? Some of the Fiji first ads that you're calling him a liar and things like that. Well, he's a liar. <laughs> we, 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 we'll, we'll get back. I want to go back to this journey that you started in 2006 from yeah. a military person <coughs> to where you are now, a politician. You used to say uh, bad things about uh, politicians uh, that yes. have ruined the country. Yes. A number of key people you started off with, uh, your comrades, former comrades, Peter Nriti and Rasute uh, Vito Kambamara, they accuse you of losing your way and becoming too much under the influence of the Attorney General that came out during the trial. So some of the people you started with have really said, no, we do not agree with Mbani vision anymore. The vision that you started, how do you feel now? We're moving on to this next stage that you stick staying on to the vision that you started, even though some people have left you? You know, when you, uh, when you lose jobs, when something, uh, tragedy strikes, uh, you always try and blame somebody else. You don't accept that it's your, it's you to blame, yeah? Uh, I wouldn't want to, to explain in public uh, where those two were sidelined. But I can tell you, it's nothing to do with the Tony General. Uh, it's to do with the values and ethos of military. Right? It's to do with the personal lives, and it's unfair of me to, yeah. to, to talk about them in public. So let's leave it there. All right, let's, final comment before we close up this uh, very interesting show. You've called your Fiji First uh, Party, actually you haven't said it's a party, you've said it's a movement. How do you see your movement going today? three days before the elections. We know we're going to win the election, Stanley. I don't know whether other parties are going to accept the results of the election. Uh, I hope that in years to come, we would uh, look into this and continue. You know, we, I went on a campaign trail once and I was in Rasa, and there was a a lady that, uh, that said to me, um, Rome was not built in a day. And that's, uh, I think, the, a, a nice statement to make with regards to what we need to do as a, as a nation to move forward. We need to get out of this 
discrimination thing. Seriously. If we want to move politics aside, politics aside, if the nation wants to move forward, we need to get rid of this discrimination. We will never prosper. Nothing is going to happen. And we'll go downhill. I'm, I'm hoping that this movement will create true democracy in our nation by having political parties that come up and fight on the grounds of development and looking at the future of our kids. What can happen if I do this? Not what can I, what, what's going to happen when I take us back hundreds of years. And I hope this is going to create that, that, uh, the, uh, that uh, feeling in society that we should come up with political parties that fight on true democracy. All right. Not on lies. Former Commander, Fiji First Leader, Prime Minister, Rear Admiral Vorenge, Wayne Marama, thank you for joining me on Closer. Thank you, Stanley. I'm up for boxing. That was the show for the evening. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's been a pleasure bringing <coughs> you this series of leaders' interviews over the last five weeks. Voting is three days from now, Wednesday the 17th. Remember, it's your choice. Good night. <laughs>